I'm Ron Dahlman, Stanford University. I'm the current Vice President of Society of Vascular Surgery. I'm here at the London Aortic Symposium in 2018. One of the topics I'm talking about today is what I see as the future of vascular surgery and how trainees can develop themselves optimally for success in the future. My points are know yourself, know what's expected of you, align your goals with that of your larger organization, collaborate aggressively, and own the problem. You have to be you have, to, you have to master all aspects of vascular disease, diagnosis, treatment, and long-term follow-up. As a baseline, over the last 20 to 30 years, our uh, predecessors in our specialty have made it easier for us to identify ourselves as vascular surgeons, as a differentiated specialty, have made it easier for us to understand the natural history of vascular surgery, what patients' expectations are, what society's expectations are, what kind of treatments we can bring to bear in these complex problems. And I think we have, as a specialty, embraced the idea that quality is paramount, that we have to know our results, we have to be able to defend our results, and we have to work on continuous quality improvement projects to try to optimize performance, center-based performance, surgeon-based performance, uh, nationwide specialty performance. I think in the years going forward, uh, particularly for individual younger vascular surgeons, I think it's going to be paramount for uh, our younger colleagues to try to figure out how they fit into the specialty and how they succeed in the institutions where they're working. I think this is one of the big challenges today that reflects on surgeon burnout, because I think some people may not be well sighted where they're at or their interests may not be well aligned with their career opportunities, I think those are all issues that, that kind of um, affect this uh, kind of, um, uh, I don't know if you call it a, uh, a epidemic of burnout, but certainly it's something that's much more discussed now. So I think uh, there's basically five factors to keep in mind with this. First would be you have to understand yourself. You have to know what's expected of you in your role. You have to align your goals with those of the institution which you're working. You have to collaborate aggressively across a whole range of collaboration opportunities. And you have to actually be the master of the disease process. We can't really be considered simply technologists implanting devices or removing blockages because uh, unfortunately then I think we're at risk for losing control of the management of vascular patients. And I think vascular surgeons, based on their training, background, interests, are by definition the um, optimal specialist to be managing vascular disease. And the way we maintain that position is by owning the problem, understanding all aspects of vascular disease management. I think it's important to understand what part of vascular um, research, practice, um, optimization, you know, is most compelling to you. So in our group, for example, we have uh, faculty who are interested in, in uh, machine learning, natural language processing, artificial intelligence. How do we use unstructured medical records, for example, to identify patients at risk? How do we better target screening programs? How do we better target surveillance programs? I think this gets to the larger issue today about precision medicine, about um, personalized medicine. I think a lot of the questions that we're having as a specialty about cost effectiveness, outcome optimization, are going to be addressed largely by better defining risk in specific patient populations. So I think for those of us who are interested and have the time to develop coding skills or can collaborate with uh, population scientists and uh, experts in artificial intelligence, I think there's a great opportunity there. I think we have opportunities, for example, in health services research. Uh, how do we get appropriate care to the right people at the right time? What kind of national policies, like screening, for example, can we implement to make sure that you know, we're optimizing uh, health across the entire population? We have opportunities in perioperative management and wound care, for example. How, if we kind of developed wound care capabilities, how does that complement our efforts at limb salvage? Can we optimize wound care interactions before revascularization, after revascularization? How do we seamlessly integrate all the components of wound care and return to a uh, home living environment that are essential for good outcomes in lower extremity limb salvage procedures beyond just patency and 
you know, perioperative outcomes, you know, surgical 3D outcomes, that kind of thing. Um, there's opportunities in discovery science. Certainly, I mean, as surgeons, we can harvest disease tissue from humans at different stages of the disease. We can identify biomarkers. We can identify novel molecular level interventions. Um, we can move the needle on actually uh, managing, preventing, treating a disease with or without surgical interventions. I think that provides a lot of opportunity for us. We can understand the genomics of vascular disease with population-based databases. I mean, there's, there's almost infinite facets to what, what uh, areas of interest you can develop in vascular disease management. And I think uh, the opportunity there for younger surgeons and almost the imperative is that they know themselves well enough to understand which of those choices are going to help them kind of move their career forward.